Hey guys, welcome back for more Coffee Talk episode 2. So we're gonna do day 12 today. So let's begin. Last time was a pretty nice episode. We got Amanda and Silver plus Bailey's. Let me check my Tomodachi. Oh, we got Aqua today. Nice. Lucas, good night. Rachel. Georgie. Only three. Hello, Miss Aqua. Hi, Moon. How are you? Good as usual. How about you? Um, honestly, a lot of things have happened. Can I order something first? Of course. What would you like? Hmm. Can you make me a cup of chai? Oh, sh I don't remember this. Cup of chai? So it, it is tea, right? I made this to her back then, if I remember correctly. On the first game. Yes, I don't remember. No. So I think it was T. Oh my god. Ginger. I think it was ginger, but... Yeah, the last one I don't remember. Mint? Lemon? Oh, let's try all of these until cinnamon. Not, not honey, though. Not honey. Okay, not that one. No, 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 it's it's not ginger, it's not mint, or no, it's not lemon as well. So, tea, it's gonna be ginger. It's not lemon, it's gonna be like ginger lemon uh, drink, something like that, right? So it's gonna be cinnamon. Okay, we got it, yes. A cup of ma masala chai for the lady with eclectic tastes. Thank you, it's so delicious. You're welcome. So, you were saying. Alright. It's just, I've been busy working on my game. I see. How's it going? It's pretty difficult, but I'll manage. I'm glad to hear that. How's that contract you talked about the other day going? Oh yeah, the contract, yes. I rejected it, of course. There was no saving it, really. Which is a shame. I truly really like their game, but with all the shady requirements they had, I could tell they looked down on us small developers. And the scary thing is, if if I hadn't known what I know now know, just because they were a publisher I loved a lot, I would have overlooked all of that. That's understandable though. You trusted them not to take advantage of you. Well, it has to be fair for both of us, right? Because at the end of the day, it's business. But I don't know. Yeah, actually I tried negotiating with them because I wondered if they still had any good faith left. Don't tell Myrtle, okay? Okay, but as, as expected, I really didn't go anywhere. Instead, they insisted they're doing me a favor since I'm just a small developer. And I wasn't thinking rationally or in business terms. Oh, doesn't sound like good faith to me, right? Considering the unfair conditions they're expecting me to accept, they could have at least been polite about it. I doubt they care though. Yeah. That aside, Myrtle is coming here soon. Great. So, you two made up already? Yes. We apologize to each other. Nice. I know I was probably being a little confusing. I didn't explain the context I applied to the situation very well. But she made it very clear that she understood why I was anxious. And she apologized for assuming. That really helped. Now she's helping me speed up development. I'm happy to hear that. Is she here now? And there she is, Miss Myrtle. Hey. Hi Myrtle. We were just talking about you. Okay. Nothing too terrible, I hope. Don't worry. Only all the good stuff. Anyway, sorry Moon, I won't be ordering today. Why? We don't have time. We're going to the expo sale, right? Oh, you're right. Expo sale? We're hunting new parts for my PC. It's been a bit slow lately. A bit? She's joking. It's pretty much in its death throes. <laughs> if we're going, we're building you a whole new setup. But if you just want parts, I can always give you mine. But at this point, I'm not sure it'll be any help at all, to be honest with you. Yeah. No, you're right. It's time to move forward with productivity. 
I've been putting off upgrading things for a while now, so it really is time for a better setup. That's a spirit. Go big or go home. Sorry Moon, seems like we have to go now. Thanks for the drink, I'll see you later. They left already? <laughs> Safe trip and good luck. That was it? Well, now like 5 minutes and they're left. Okay, let's see. I guess I'll go over today's checklist. Hmm. Oh, Henry, he's here. And Gala. Well, hello, gentlemen. Hey, Moon. Moon? Nice to see you here, Henry. How goes it? Good, good. I see you're doing good too, as usual. What do you want to drink, Henry? It's on me. No, no, uh, no, won't do. Well, let's talk about bills later. So, uh, what will it be? You first. You sure? Okie dokie. Hey, okay, what do you want? I have one STMJ, please. STMJ, his favorite. So it's gonna be milk, and be ginger, and honey. <laughs> With the egg right there. One STMJ coming up. Oh, I need to give the invite, yes, to Gala, or I nearly forgot. It smells so nice. Spot on. Thanks, Moon. You're very welcome. How about you, sir? Uh, oh, it's my turn. Something with ginger, please. Anything else with that? Well, what, you, what would you recommend? Anything from your new tea line is fine. Oh, I see you have a new selection. Yes, we have blue tea and hibiscus tea available. Hibiscus, huh? You should try Tejaje Rosella. It's pretty good for this kind of weather. Sounds familiar. It's ginger steeped with rosal buds. Another name for hibiscus. Anything else in it? Well, it's a bit sweet, so yeah, honey. Interesting. I'll try it then. Tejaje Rosella. Okay, we need hibiscus. We need some ginger. And we need some honey. Okay, let's give it to him. Plus, let's give uh, the, car the card from Bailey's last time, right? Did we make this? It kind of looks like we made this already. Yes, you just give it to your lover. <laughs> What's this? Oh, it's Bailey's and Lua's wedding invitation. Really? For Hyde. Oh, the date is really soon. Could you pass it along to him since I'm not sure when he'll be here? Hmm, okay, sure. Thank you. A popping cup of Tejaje Rosella for you. Thanks. What do you think, Henry? Does it look any good? Uh-oh. It looks about right. It smells good too. Try it. Yep, it's good. Glad I passed your impromptu test. So, what's been going on? Did I miss anything? They, they haven't met Lua, right? Or Henry hasn't met Lua and Bailey's? Something happened, didn't it? You can say that. I think the officer is coming too, by the way. Oh, yeah, officer. So, we need to give Riona's card, right? Alright. As for me, I'm just glad my fury is over. Are you okay, though? I'm fine, as you can see. How are you managing, Henry? Did you get your checkup? I did, I did. Rachel pestered me to get it all done all week, so I had to do it. Good. And there's no doubt I need to slow down. I can feel it in my bones. Time is a harsh mistress, as they say. Ain't that the truth. But I don't think you get to complain, though. Why not? You know my body isn't what it used to be anymore. Oh? I mean, compared to my prime... 50 years ago. 50 years ago. <laughs> I'm kidding. Truth is, my body doesn't hold up well when I'm transforming anymore. Oh, is that so? Yep. The soreness doesn't go away as quick as it used to be. It's harder to get up in the morning after all that. Like today. I know the feeling all too well. Especially in this kind of weather. Oh. It's like my body knows if a storm's gonna get worse. No weather forecast can match the accuracy of my joints. <laughs> well, lucky for you, ginger is great for sore muscles. Yeah. 
I've heard Georgie's here. Hey, folks. The man of the hour. Hi, Georgie. Moon, what did I miss? Some very important oh, weather talk. Is that so? Sounds like I miss a ton then. How are you? How am I? If you're talking about my case, well, I don't even know where to begin. Andrew, you know about. You know nothing about what I'm about to say, right? No, what are you talking about? You should have primed him before I got here. My bad. In my defense, I didn't know you were coming until Mr. Gala mentioned it. Excuses, excuses. I'll help explain it to Henry. In short, there's been a string of car vandalisms nearby. Yes, tell him all about it. <laughs> Look at his eyes. So he's trying to figure out if the tree being gone has anything to do with the case. And that's where we are now. Yep, that's about it. That's a lot to take in. Anything new happened since? Well, I tried something. I set a few candles where the tree was. I used my lighter and things happened. Mind the backing up a bit? It feels like there's a lot of context missing here. Well, I'm warning you. Everything I'm about to tell you is real. It'll sound a little crazy, but no, I haven't lost it yet. Got it? Loud and clear. I told Moon about my lighter a while ago. How it might be connected to the fairy market we talked about before. Really? In what way? The lighter was my grandpa's, and there's a chance he bought it from there. Interesting. Yeah, well, what a coincidence. <laughs> He's getting scared again. Anyways, my daughter likes this sort of mystery stuff, right? After talking to her about what's been going on, she believed my lighter was the key to making sense of all this and gave me some pointers. So I went back there last night to the spot, you know, to where the true used to be. I lit a few candles there and put the lighter right in the middle of it all. And I'll be honest, it was spooky as, as heck. Of course it'll be spooky. The air was still and I felt a tension in my head. I wasn't sure if it was be just me being creeped out or if there was something else going on. Whatever it was, I thought I should leave it alone. So I followed my gut and got the heck out of there. And then what happened? And then what happened? It blew up. What? What do you mean, what? The lighter, it just blew up. Well, what do you mean blew up? Yes, what do you mean? Yeah, I think we definitely need more context here. Well, I didn't see it because I was walking towards my car, you see. But I heard it. But how? <laughs> With a little whoosh, followed by a couple of clink clinks. What kind of sound is that? You know, like something small and metallic blew up. Wouldn't bang work better? No, that's a shot. Wouldn't want to confuse y'all with that. But, Tao, what is that? You know. And then what happened? Right, okay. Then I immediately looked back to see it had fallen over with its lit lids open. The flame, it was burning white. Wow. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I freaked the freck out. But before I could do anything, two small figures emerged from the corner, walking together the toward the lighter. Did they see you? Yeah, they did. They inspected my lighter while I was just standing there. Then they asked me straight up, Is this lighter yours, guy? I said, yeah. Then I fired a question back. Are you the ones who have been messing with the cars around here lately? And they said yes. What? Well, it sounds like case closed. So they weren't ghosts? Hell no. Thank God for that. Then who are they? Let's just say they were close friends of the deceased. They were part of the fairy folk, but I didn't expect them at all. Didn't expect? Do you know them? Kinda. In fact, they own the gnome gnomes near my place. Oh, wow. Did they know it was your car then? Nope, cause I only ordered takeout. I usually walk there. What was the reason for all the vandalisms then? It all started because of a broken promise, and we have to start way back for that. 
You remember why the tree was there in the first place, right? Yes. The tragic hit and run. At the time, the court ruling practically let the driver off the hook outside the DUI charge. Well, it sparked a huge protest. Good. In response to it, the mayor at the time gave his word to the victim's family. He promised to keep the tree as a landmark for the community, and the vow was kept well after his tenure was over. But he died a few years ago, and we all know recently what happened to the tree. I see. So it was their attempt to keep the memory alive. Not just for the friend, but as a remembrance of the injustice as well. And after all the urban renewals the city has gone through, makes sense if the community that used to be there is gone by now. That's right. There used to be a lot of veteran housing and low-rise apartments in the area. Now it's filled with never-ending projects. You okay? Oh yeah. Sorry. There's something about it that bothers me a bit. Like what? Their unique disposition after they pass. It bothers me that their own memories are inf insufficient to ensure their existence. And by failing to remember, we the outside party will also gradually lose track of their existence. It just doesn't feel right to me. I get what you mean, an odd erasure of existence. But apparently that's what that's why they keep animals. The Gnome Gnome's owners told me they have a large mastiff living in their place. Others even take care of multiple animals at, the, at once. Interesting. I suppose that's why some folk prefer living near the wilderness. But animals don't live long either. Right. But the erasure starts happening if they're completely forgotten, right? Something like that. I guess. I'm not sure. Okay. But doesn't that normally happen anyway? How do we pay respects or remember someone who died a long time ago? Like our ancestors, for example. It's our call, isn't it? Every April, Rachel and I would visit my wife's grave. We used to visit her grandparents' graves too when my wife was still alive. If our extended family was visiting, then they'd join us. We'd clean their gravestones, spring food, and have a feast while catching up. It's how Nekomimis honor the dead, and I'm sure other cultures have their own ways too. Right. I truly think continuing the tradition is something we do for ourselves though. To remember the deceased and all the reasons they matter to us. So except for the weird erased memory part, it sounds on par to me. It's the effort of the living to remember the dead anyway. You're kinda right. Unless you believe in life after death. Memories are for us, not for the dead. Exactly. It would be great if we could all remember and help each other. Because keeping track of any sort of history is a team effort. Since the best way to gain wisdom is to learn from the past, whether it's good or bad. Yes. Speaking of gnome gnomes owners though, what happened to them after all that? Alright, did you arrest them? Nope. Huh? Are you going to let them go? Not necessarily. But I got an idea on what I have to do. Right now, I'm just happy there's no ghost involved. Still, it was truly something it was truly really something else. Yeah, what a night it must have been. It is what it is. What's up, big guy? Yeah, yeah. something in mind. Yeah, he's kinda just looking looking, right? Gala, what's happening with him? No, nothing. A shame about your lighter, though. Oh no! Okay, okay, okay. I got, I got scared a little bit. Yeah, we haven't gi given Georgie a drink yet. I thought I forgot to give Riona's card. A shame about the lighter of yours, though. Oh yeah, it's probably busted, right? That's a thing. It works just fine, not even a scratch. Really? But the thing blew up, didn't it? Like, but how? Heck, we even debated the sound effects and everything. As I said, it still works fine. So I don't know what else to tell you. I see. You want to know what I think? No. <laughs> it's haunted. No, it's not. That thing is definitely haunted. What are you talking about? The white flames is a bit unnatural, I agree. Look at Georgie now, he's scared. And I remember how you kept forgetting your lighter here. Hey now. A man is allowed to forget stuff as he gets older, no? As for the blowing up, it was probably a well-timed bad chemical reaction or something. This thing is real old, after all. If that's the case, you might want to stop carrying it around. At any rate, I believe you now, officer. There's no such thing as coincidence, indeed. <laughs>
I still think it's a ghost though. Shut it, Henry. Shush. In any case, mystery solved. For now, at least. Hmm? Oh no, I think I have to go now. I didn't realize I missed multiple messages earlier because I was so engrossed in your story. Sorry to rush off. I'll see you all again and next time. Sure, safe trip. Nice seeing you again, Henry. Take care. Okay, Henry left. Are you gonna order anything, Officer Georgie? Let me move over there. You know, all that talking made me thirsty. You want anything? I'm good. One espresso. Espresso. So espresso is just coffee, coffee, coffee. Okay, let's give him the, the card as well. Before I forget. What is it? It's Miss Riona's number. She asked me to give it to you. She said that she can help you find someone if you need it. Or if you need any information from her. I see. Well, I'm sure it'll come in handy. Thank you. Here's your express espresso officer. Thanks. Great as always. So what's next, officer? What's your plan after this? Other than talking to them, I guess I'll focus on the rumors. Other or word is going around that cards are being messed up there. That's kind of expected though, isn't it? Well, there's no point in adding to citizens' worries when the case is pretty much over. And I don't want bad press to paint over the area's history. You're right. There's nothing like rumors without being stopped. They'll just spiral out of control. I have a question for you though. Which do you prefer, wild rumors or bad press? Hmm, that's a tough one. There's no limit to what wild rumors can become or how far they'll go. But the press can shape a story, report it, and then many will believe it as truth. Both are worrying in their own ways. Fair point. But what if we combine them? Hmm? Rumor, truth, and press. If you somehow combine them and then think, I think I have a plan. A crazy one, but a plan nonetheless. Maybe y'all can also add to it? Hmm. Sure. It'll take a while to explain though. Well, I'll be here all night. I got time. Alright then, brace yourself folks, it's gonna be a doozy. Okay, just, just skipped it. <laughs> oh, you ended the day? Are you serious? Flower bed. Pretty short day today. That was it? Okay. <laughs> vegan food okay so we finished day 12 so at least officer georgie finally solved this case it was just some fairy folk and yeah it's nice seeing henry again even just for a little bit and we also gave them their cards for gala the wedding invitation for officer georgie riona's number so next episode we're gonna do day 13 so i'll just see you then guys bye bye